going to come to you with the woman with the issue of blood today. It's a massive story. I can only touch on a small, very small portion of this story, and I will, because we just have a few minutes. And so I'm just going to begin reading here in Mark chapter 5. It's also another chapter in Matthew that deals with this same topic, and we'll touch on that. But here's what it says. And Jesus went with them, and much people followed him and thronged him. He came off the boat there. And as he comes off the boat, he's not just walking. He's just walking. Nothing special. He's not laying hands on anybody. He's not even preaching. He's just walking. He's just walking, just strolling along, and people are following him. The Bible says that because they know, obviously, they've heard about him, and they're following him like the press would follow today. And, but he's just walking along. It's nothing super going on here other than he got off the boat, and he's walking. Jer Iris had just met with him and said, my, my servant's sick, and there's a situation. I need help. And, and so Jesus says, I'll go with you. I'm going to go with you. And so that's what they're doing. They're just walking. All they're doing is walking, not laying hands on anybody. Get the picture? Just like you would walk down the sidewalk, just walking. People are following, but he's just walking. And then it goes on, a certain woman comes up, which had an issue of blood for 12 years. This is a long time to have a sickness and a disease. She's been bleeding for 12 years. She's been struggling for 12 years. She's been in difficulty for 12 years. Time has gone by. Income has been lost, situations have... Now, you've got to understand, when you're dealing with this subject matter in the New Testament, there were a lot of legal reasons why this woman being on the street walking out there was a real big deal. You see, if you had a disease like this, you were not to be out among the Jewish people. You were diseased. You were ostracized from the people. You were set apart. You were not allowed to be a part of the relationship of normal community. So now not only is she a sick person that's weak and wants healing from this disease, she's also lost income and relationship, but she has no social event either. She's not socially involved. She's not socially viable. And so for her to get her healing, to go to the place where, where the other religious people are, she's even ostracized for that. She can't get there because she doesn't fit the norm. She doesn't fit the normal stereotype. She's not allowed. She's been st- Uh, uh, singled out and set apart. You can't go where you could get help. I mean, now she can't even go where she can get help. I want you to think about this. So the only help she can see now is coming down the road. He's just walking. He's not not, not laying hands on anybody. So this has been her condition for 12 years. How many of you can get depressed after 12 years? Have any of you ever felt like your condition was never ending? Come on, raise your hand. This is how she felt. And then she says this, this, a certain woman had an issue 12 years, had suffered many things of many positions. Now, they didn't have medicine like we have today. They didn't have understanding. So I can't imagine the terror and the trouble she had gone through. Could you imagine the, the type of medicine she had endured throughout the region? I'm sure it was the best they could provide. And, 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 and they had doctors like we do, but not like we do. Amen? They were just, I mean, searching remedies, using various uh, methods and things. Who knows what torture this poor lady had gone through. She'd seen many, not, some, not one, but many. I mean, we can sometimes go for many cures and many solutions, but here she is, many cures. I'm looking, and somebody's got the answer. Somebody can help me, but yet no one could help her. Twelve years. She spent all that she had. Now she's totally broke. This condition has stolen her life. It's stolen. The Bible says that the thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But thank God Jesus came to give us life. How many know Jesus is a life giver? Oh, thank God for Jesus. Somebody ought to shout out, thank God for Jesus. Jesus. I mean, really, in this room, I mean, if you really feel that way, if God's brought you out of a miry clay, if God's lifted your feet up out of some mess, if God delivered you from stuff, if God has brought you out, I want you to say, thank God. God. I mean, say it like it's really something. Thank God God. for Jesus. Jesus. I feel like Bartimaeus today. Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy. Hallelujah. The deliverer has come. The freedom of God has come. The victory of God is here. The overcoming of God has arrived. Jesus, the way maker, the healer, the deliverer, the champion, my savior, my healer, my helper, my protection, my strength, Jesus. 
There's not enough shouting this morning. I watched a hurricane go around us like we were sitting in the middle of a bowl. I don't know. I don't know. Some of y'all, some of y'all just don't get it. You just don't get it. Thank God for Jesus. I even know that the people that know God that are going through these things like they are going through in Florida and other places, God's going to bring them out. God's going to deliver them. God's going to make a way. God's going to see them through. God is going to provide. They're not going to go under. They're going over. Because God said it. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are over only in God. I do have heart for them, but I'm praying. But I know my deliverer, Jesus, will not let them down. He will not leave them. He will not forsake them. They're going to come out. You would too. Oh, thank God for Jesus. I don't think we've gotten there yet. I don't quite think that we've quite reached the place that we ought to. Some of y'all really need to thank him. Some of y'all would have been dirt, broken, poor. Had nothing, living in a box. Messed up life, messed up marriage, messed up home. No, no, God brought you out and put you in a nice house. And he got you a nice car. And he took care of your children. And oh my goodness, don't you know what God. Don't you know what God. Oh, man. I just can't quite get off that yet. I just can't, can't quite walk away. Some of y'all, you just so poor mouth and so down and out. And so y'all, all you can talk about is the mess. All you can talk about is the problem. All you, but God has always been and always will be bigger than your problem, bigger than your challenge, bigger than your situation, bigger than anything. He's the biggest. He's the greatest. He's the largest. He's able to make all grace lay abound toward me that I can have all sufficiency. Somebody ought to shout like a preacher. <laughs> Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I'd shout out my marriage. I'd shout out my wealth. I'd shout out my healing. I'd shout out my deliverance. I'd shout out the way maker. I'd shout out my blessing. I'd shout out I overcome. I'd shout out my victory. I'd shout it out. I'd shout it out. I think if she'd have got stuck on, grew none the worse. She already knew the condition. She kept growing worse. She wasn't looking for what was worse. She didn't talk about what was worse. She didn't dwell on what was worse. Even though she was growing worse. Some of y'all, every time a little adversity comes... And the devil adds a little more to it. All you can think about is it got worse. You just don't know, Pastor. You just don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what I've gone. Whoa, what does it mean? Oh, not this girl. We don't even know her name here. We don't even know her name. We know nothing. All we know is she's a woman with the issue of blood. Jesus don't know her name. He don't know nothing about her. She done grown worse. She did all she could do. It just kept getting worse. Then it says, she suffered many things. She grew worse. When she heard. (sighs) Some folks have heard about him. She didn't just hear about him. I like the way it phrases it right here. When she heard. Of Jesus. She didn't hear what he did for somebody else. She heard what he could do for her. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I mean she realized when she heard. If he do it for them. 
he'll do it for me. If he'll watch over them, he'll watch over me. If he will set him free, he'll set me free. She didn't just hear about what it is. She heard for herself. She heard something different. Listen, I tell you now. If you can get the revelation of a God who is alive and Jesus is ever living, he's making intercession for you and I. And you can get a revelation of the reality of who he is to you and not just what he is to somebody else. Something about your life's going to change. Something about your situation is going to change. You can't know Jesus and stay the same. You can't know Jesus and remain. Jesus will fix it. Oh! She didn't just hear about him. She heard him. She heard the word. She heard the word. It goes on to say this. When she heard of Jesus, she acted. See, when you hear of Jesus, when I think about him and all he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, and how he set me free, I want to shout, 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 shout all night. Hey, when I hear about Jesus, and how he set me free, when I think about Jesus, and how he set me free, I want to dance, 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 dance.
when she heard of Jesus, she came in and pressed in through the crowd. This rejected, refused, beat down, told down, messed up, poor, broke lady decided if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just get through this crowd, if I can just make my way to the front, if I can just get there, I just know I done heard, I done heard. She didn't let her circumstance, she didn't let her weakness, she didn't let other people, she didn't let other stuff stop her from getting to Jesus. You get through that stuff, listen, you got to come through it. You got to walk through it. You can't let it stop you. You can't let others stop you. You got to walk on by. You got to press your way through. You got to kick the folks out of the way. If you can just get to Jesus, He'll set your feet to dance. Make your morning into joy. For she said, Another translation said, for she kept on saying. She just kept on saying. Because the manifestation had not come yet. You see, it wasn't about what she felt walking through the crowd. It wasn't about what she was going through. It wasn't about the indignation. It wasn't about all the other folks. It wasn't about all the darkness I've been through. It wasn't how sick I felt. She just kept on saying. She just kept on saying, if I can get there and touch the helm of his garment, if I can just get there. She was speaking and she just kept on saying. See, I got to say it. Say it till you see it. Don't let the circumstances shut your mouth. Don't you stop talking about Jesus. Don't you stop talking about deliverance. Don't you stop talking about your miracle. Don't stop talking about your help. The wind's coming by help, even from the Lord. I won't let nothing hold me down. I won't let nothing stop me. I'm going to get to him. And she kept talking. And she kept talking. And she kept talking. I imagine she talked herself all the way to him. And she got weaker. And as it got harder, if I could just... If I could just, it wasn't getting easier as she got closer. It was getting harder. It wasn't like people got out of the way. They got in the way. I might say, if I could just, yes. If I could just, yes.
about what people thought about her. She could have been worried about her reputation and had her thought, what will they think of me? If I get out there and push my way through, if I just reach to and touch his hem. I mean, it wasn't like the disciples made it easy. What are you talking about? Who thronged you? Who touched you? Can't you see there are many people, but one person in that crowd came knowing that if they could touch the hem of his garment, they weren't waiting to see what God would do for somebody else. They were only worried about God. What will you do for me? She didn't worry about her reputation and what other people would think about her. The only reputation she needed to know was the reputation of Jesus. He was known as the healer. He was known as the deliverer. He was the known as the love of God. He was the... Uh, some of you need to forget about your reputation. You need to stop worrying about what other people think about you. You need to stop worrying about what happens if I dance. What happens if I leave? What happens if I jump? You only need to worry about the one who's watching you leave, who's watching you jump, who's watching you dance, who's watching you shout, who's watching you clap. He's watching. He's watching. And he sees it. He knows who's pressing on. He knows who's going after their miracle. He knows who was. the surge of power leave him he stopped and said who touched my clothes and his disciples were afraid everybody's touching you 
that Jesus recognized there was a different touch. Ooh. Yeah, there was a different touch. I can't stay here no more. I can't fight this fight no more. There was a different touch. That's right. That's right. That's right. There was a different touch. There was a touch that said, I got to have it. I'm not leaving till I get it. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I got to do. I don't care what I got to go through. I got to have it. I need it. I'm not stopping. You can't stop me. You can't back me down. You can't hold me up. You can't talk about me enough. You can't run me down because I've already been let up. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. It was not a physical touch. Although she reached up and touched him physically, which was the expression of what was going on internally. Another translation says she kept saying within herself. She said within herself. In other words, what she was speaking was faith within her. She was speaking faith within herself. She was speaking, the the expression of God touching her was her using her physical body to extract anointing by what was going on in her. It was not that she touched the hem of his garment. She touched it with her faith before she ever touched it with her hand. She had reached out by faith. We see that the Bible says that she was gone. He said, power has left me. And then he said the most interesting thing. He didn't say it's because I'm a great God. He didn't say it's because I prayed all night and fasted. He didn't say it's because I'm having a good day after all. He was just walking down the road. Wasn't nothing special going on. He wasn't laying hands on folks. He wasn't dancing and singing. They weren't having revival meeting at the moment. He was just walking down the road. But she had a need right then. She needed it right then. I don't care if you're walking down the road, Jesus. I need it right now. I got to have it right this minute. And the Bible says, Jesus said, your faith. It was your faith. Her faith connected before her hand ever connected. And God showed her faith through her hand's connection. When you get up and you dance, when you get up and you shout, when you get up and you weep, when you get up and you run, when you get up and you clap, you are expressing a faith on the inside side of you. It's not that you ran. It's not that you clapped. It's not that you jumped. But if you've got faith on the inside and you believe in the victory, if tomorrow you won the lotto, $400 million, you wouldn't just sit there. You'd be headed to the bank. And I'm telling you right now, I wish somebody understood what I'm talking about. Thy faith, thy faith hath made thee whole. This morning, I don't know what you need. I don't know what you're going through. But I know who can get you through it. I know who can get you over it. I know who can get you past it. I know who can get you beyond it. I know who can set you free from it. I know the deliverer. The woman with the issue of blood had been sick a very long time. She'd seen many doctors in the country and spent everything that she'd had trying to get better. She desired healing with all of her heart, but nothing had helped. She just grew worse. What was the first step that she took that totally changed her condition? What did she do to set the new course for healing? She heard. She heard. Nothing happened until this woman's life until she had heard. That may sound like a small thing, but hearing is the biggest factor in changing the course of a person's life. Although all through the Bible we find direction correlating between hearing and healing. What did she hear when she heard of Jesus? 
In John, Jesus is called the Word. She heard Jesus. It didn't, it, 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 it could just as well have said this. She heard the Word. This morning, I preach an awesome message. There are those in this, in this room who need to hear the Word. Hear the Word. Maybe you're in sin today. Maybe you're separated from God at a distance. It only takes hearing. It's not about what He can do, what He has done, but what He will do in you. What He can be to you. What He can do for you. What He wants to do. Some churches preach God can. God can do anything. God can help you. God can set you free. That's wrong. God will. He will set you free. He will help you. He will deliver you. He will heal you. He will help you. And so the first step to changing the course of our lives is just simply to hear. Ready for change? Don't just be a Sunday morning Christian anymore. Don't just be the status quo. Just as the woman with the issue of blood pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' robe, if you'll reach out and press through this circumstance, your life can change. Just make the effort. You can do it. If you want change in your life, take a step. Do something different. It's time to start with this moment. It's time to get off the bed of affliction. It's time to get off complacency. It's time to get off indifference. It's time to get off status quo. The woman in this story was nameless. She had no name. A certain woman, the Bible says, with an issue of blood. But after Jesus healed her, he called her daughter. She wasn't anymore a nameless figure. She was his daughter. Daughter, thy faith makes thee whole. From nameless and nobody to somebody with a name. That's who we are. You're not a nobody. You're a somebody. Bow your heads.